Now, like I was saying, the boiling temperature, that's what's going to determine the coil temperature. If we lower the pressure too much, our coil is going to be too cold. Now, if you think about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, what happens at those temperatures? Well, water starts to freeze. So if we were to look at a PT chart and we look at 32 degrees and we check to see what the pressure that of that refrigerant is at 32 degrees is, if we're dealing with R22, then that pressure is going to be 57 PSIG, 57. So when I see that the pressure drops down to 57, that tells me that, yes, my coil is at freezing point. It's going to freeze. It's going to ice up, which, of course, is not good. Lots of different things will happen, but we'll get to that later. So you need to know what the correct temperature needs to be for that evaporator and what conditions do you have. Okay, if the room is hot, it's going to affect it. Room is too cold, it's going to affect it. Are you working on a refrigerator or an air conditioning system? All of these things you need to know because all of that is going to change what your pressure is. And don't forget, when you change the pressure, temperature changes. Pressure goes up, temperature goes up. Pressure drops, temperature drops. They follow each other. So, Last thing I want to say about this is that this relationship between pressure and temperature, well, we can see that in a PT chart, and that happens in the evaporator. Got to keep that in mind. We're going to be looking at a PT chart later on, but if you look at slide 11, you look on here on slide 11, we see that we have the outdoor unit, and we can see our, the house, we can see the wall, but on the left side, you see that you have the outdoor unit. We see that we have a compressor. We have the condenser, which is that in red. We have a line, a red line that goes to the indoor coil. That indoor coil, that's our evaporator. There's also a blue line that goes back to the compressor. Now, this evaporator. What's the temperature of the evaporator? 40 degrees. 40 degrees, so we're absorbing the heat from that 75 degree air. We're absorbing that heat, and as the refrigerant boils, it sends that heat outside. And we get rid of that heat to the 95 degree weather. So again, we're making it go from warmer to cooler, 75 to 40. And then we're going to take that heat outside and dump it outside because we're moving heat from a place where it is not wanted to a place where it makes little or no difference. Because we're absorbing heat from the 75 degrees, we can see that the air going into the room now is 55 degrees. We have the difference between 75 and 55, that's 20 degrees. Some people call that delta T, temperature difference. So now we see that we have 20 degrees of temperature difference between the air coming in and the air going out. Ideally, that's what you want. Ideally, that's, that's the temperature difference you want between the air coming in and the air going out with a 40 degree coil. 